Hi, everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories. I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. We're on episode 110, which is just wonderful. And today we're going to be talking about skincare and makeup. So this is a five-minute English episode, and all of the terms you'll need to know about this topic are packed within five minutes. If this is your first time listening to an episode of this type, please be aware that it might be more challenging than normal episodes because it's in-depth and topic-specific. Now, I can imagine my husband seeing the title of this episode and thinking there is nothing for him here, given that he does not talk about skincare or makeup on a regular basis. I hear you, but hold your horses. (laughs) Although many of you might not need to know the difference between things like foundation or concealer, you might want to talk about having circles or bags under your eyes or the quality of good and bad skin. Don't brush this episode off too soon. Believe me, there's something here for everyone. Without any further ado, let's begin. You wake up Saturday morning, dying of thirst, and stumble to the kitchen to grab a glass of water. As you pass your reflection in a hallway mirror, you're thrown aback. Fake eyelashes are hanging from your eyelids. You've got multicolored glitter from ear to ear and bright red lipstick smeared across your chin. What a mess. You rarely wear makeup, but last night you made an exception for a costume party at a friend's house. It was a normal house party, but you decided to go all out. You dressed up as a samba dancer with a vibrant sequin dress and a large decorative headpiece. You also went to town on your skin, hair, and makeup. Given your lack of experience in the beauty department, you ask your friend Katie for help. And the hours that ensued became an informative lesson on how to look like a million bucks. You're in Katie's bathroom surrounded by products when she hands you a round cotton pad with makeup remover and instructs you to wipe off the mascara you have on. When you're done, she washes your face with a cleanser to help clean your pores and remove dirt, grease, and any residual makeup from the day before. Then she gently spreads toner on your forehead, cheeks, and chin to refresh the surface of your skin. It's now ready to absorb moisture from eye cream, serums, and moisturizers. Around our eyes, she explains, we often get creases from years of smiling or squinting from the sun in our eyes. And a moisturizing eye cream can help smooth those fine lines. She dabs some under your lower lashes and then massages a vitamin C serum into your face and neck. Vitamin C, she explains, promotes collagen production and removes obvious wrinkles. You're a bit of a skeptic, but keep quiet. According to Katie, serums are magic. They're extra concentrated, nutrient-dense liquids that can fix a number of skin issues, from puffiness under the eyes, dry and flaky skin, blemishes, or even uneven skin tone. For people with acne-prone skin and regular breakouts, she says... Their best bet at prevention is to buy over-the-counter products with acid, exfoliating face washes, which can help wash away dead skin, or rejuvenating face masks to help unclog pores. Although they're not something you use often, they can certainly help with pimples, 
whiteheads, and blackheads. As a last step, Katie squirts a tinted moisturizer in her hands and spreads it all over your face to hydrate the skin. For extra protection against ultraviolet rays, she always uses one with a high SPF, such as 50. The skin is prepped. It's time to put on makeup. First, she spreads a primer on your face to ensure that foundation goes on smoothly. She uses a light liquid one, not a powder, not a cream, and not one with high coverage. Once the foundation is rubbed in, Katie covers up blemishes and freckles with concealer, making sure to blend it in so that it doesn't look splotchy, and then pats the face with translucent powder to avoid shine. Nobody wants to look greasy. Then, to appear sun-kissed, she spreads a bronzer on your cheekbones and the tip of your nose. By nature, you have thick and bushy eyebrows. In school, you were made fun of, and so now you pluck daily and pencil in bald spots to give your brows a good arch. Eyebrow threading at a salon is not really in your budget, but you think a pencil works just fine. Katie decides to give you heavier brows for today's look. To complement your brown eyes, she takes an eyeshadow brush and spreads bright blue eyeshadow along your lids and then adds a bit of glitter to make your eyes pop. With a thin brush and black liquid eyeliner, she draws on cat eyes and then glues fake eyelashes along your eyelids. Afterwards, she applies waterproof mascara to the top knowing that it might get hot and sweaty at the party and waterproof is the only way to go to prevent running. As a finishing touch, she puts a bright cherry apple red lipstick on your lips. Matte lipstick, not glossy. No lip gloss, no lip liner, just the red lipstick. You do not want it to smudge, so you do not move. When Katie is finished, you both stand back to admire the work of art. The end result is phenomenal. Even though you didn't get to dance in the streets of Rio during Carnival, you did dance the night away, and your makeup lasted. In English, we often describe perfect skin and makeup as flawless or impeccable. On the flip side, there are many terms used to describe bad skin and makeup. When someone puts on too much makeup, we say they look like a clown, or we could say that they go overboard. When you go overboard on mascara and your lashes stick together, they are clumpy. If you go overboard on foundation or concealer, we say it looks cakey. If you cake on foundation as a verb, it means that you put on a ton. You put on too much. Let's face it. Not all of us have flawless skin like the movie stars. We also might not visit cosmetologists or dermatologists on a regular basis. We might not get chemical peels, Botox, or treatments done. So give yourself a break. The most important thing is to feel good in your skin. And however you do that is up to you. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed the chat about skincare and makeup. For those of you who do wear makeup, I encourage you to think about some of the terms you heard today while you're putting on your makeup in the morning or while you're doing your skincare routine. Uh, there were a lot of fun verbs and phrases used in this episode. Lots of phrasal verbs, expressions, if you want to get the full lesson that goes along with this audio, be sure to sign up to Season 3 Premium Content. You can now get that at a discount when you buy Season 1, 2, and 3 as a bundle. So all premium content. Be sure to visit the website at AmericanEnglishPodcast.com to find that. The lesson that goes alongside this episode contains the transcript with highlighted challenging vocabulary and definitions, exercises, quizzes, and a video where I describe all of the most challenging 
words and phrases in new use cases, uh, which is very helpful, of course, if you want to master some of the things that you heard here. So check it out at AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. I don't have much else to say about this topic other than the fact that I remember in college loving every Friday afternoon when we got out of class and knew that there were there were no more classes for the weekend. And Friday nights were usually a time when you would get ready for parties with friends and usually spend a long time prepping the skin and doing a makeup routine. It was a lot of fun. Recently, I listened to a podcast and it was about different products that you can buy that can really help your skin look better and more youthful. I am a huge skeptic when people try and sell me something, but after hearing the science behind different types of serums and creams and what different acids do, I thought, well, <laughs> let's jump into this. There's no harm in buying some products and seeing what they do, right? So I've had a lot of fun with it. I will go ahead and add some of the different products I found and loved in the episode notes. I think the vitamin C oil is the most amazing thing I've ever found. My skin definitely feels more elastic after using it, which is pretty cool. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful day. Remember, always wear sunscreen. Don't pop your pimples because your skin can scar. And just listen to your mom. Moms have the best advice about this stuff. They've gone through it all before. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the American English Podcast. Remember, it's my goal here to not only help you improve your listening comprehension, but to show you how to speak like someone from the States. If you want to receive the full transcript for this episode, or you just want to support this podcast, make sure to sign up to premium content on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and hope to see you soon.